Hi guys, trying a different format of video today. I've had a few people ask about a bit more gameplay testing, so I thought I'd do a little bonus video this week before I pull it all apart again and begin working on the next revision of the PCBs. For those unfamiliar with the project, this is the NUC Deck. It's an open source handheld gaming PC that I am designing as part of a YouTube series. I've designed it to use a NUC mini PC, with the idea being that any model of NUC should be able to be used eventually, leaving the doors wide open to either build a powerhouse or the cheapest portable PC build you can manage. I have chosen a 7th gen i5 NUC with 16GB of RAM for my build as the price was reasonable for this model and it should provide enough power to run most of the games I'm interested in. The 3D models are now available so you can begin building your own while I finish off the electrical side of things. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Before I begin testing, I did try out Project SBC's handheld control panel for TDP limiting, and while it does appear to limit the TDP properly, even having the TDP limiter turned off with the app running appears to cause me to lose a fair bit of performance, so I've decided to go without it for the time being. I'll speak to the devs and see if they can work out what's going on. So today I'm just going to be testing out a few games with the NUC running through the watt meter so I can give you a rough estimate of run times for different platforms and games. The measurements I'm taking are entire system power draw, not TDP, so this should give us a pretty accurate measurement of how long we can expect these platforms to run. These are obviously only relevant to the 7th gen i5 NUC I've used in my build, but it should at least give you a baseline of what to expect. I have got Afterburner running, but it doesn't appear to support FPS on this particular version of Intel's integrated graphics, so we'll just have to judge on how smoothly the games run by eye. The video is all filmed in 60fps, so it should be pretty obvious if any games aren't running smoothly. The display is also limited to 60fps anyway, so I have VSync turned on so we aren't wasting power producing frames that we can't display. I'm going to start off with the easiest to run titles and work my way up. To begin with, I started out with Game Boy Advance and Pokemon Emerald. This is running at 3 times the Game Boy's native resolution and is obviously no issue for the NUC whatsoever. If the power consumption does increase from idle, it's such a small amount that my watt meter can't detect it. This platform appears to consume about 13 watts of power, giving us a total runtime of about 3.5 hours. This has got to be the least efficient way to play Game Boy games ever, as that means it's over 30 times less efficient than the Game Boy Advance. Hopefully Game Boy Advance is in anyone's target platform though, so let's move on to PlayStation 1 with the Duck Station Emulator and Crash Team Racing. This is running at 2x native resolution, with linear upscaling, widescreen hacks and geometry correction are enabled, and we're running in D3D11. Display is scaled to match the aspect ratio of the display. I love how well Duck Station improves these old PS1 titles. This is running beautifully, it looks terrific too. The power usage on this bumps up by about 2 watts from idle, leaving us at about 15 watts and 3 hours of runtime. This one has been doing the rounds on the internet lately and the YouTuber Rubes has done a complete remaster of the game which is looking terrific. You should check it out if game development is your kind of thing. This is just the original version with the Lucas Hit and Run mod launcher to solve the weird loading and texture display issues on modern PCs. This is running with all settings maxed out and at the native resolution of the display. Power consumption is sitting at around 15 watts, so like the PS1, we can expect about 3 hours of gameplay with this one. Next up is PSP with the PPSSPP emulator and God of War. Again, this one has absolutely no issues. Resolution is set to auto, so I think it's running at least 2 times the native resolution, but I'm not 100% sure. I picked this one because a number of sources claim it's one of the toughest PSP games to run, so this is a worst case scenario for us. I couldn't get far in this one due to some controller issues which I will fix in the next revision of the PCBs, but from this initial introduction scene, it appears to be running very well. Power consumption is sitting at about 21 watts with this one, so we can expect a bit over 2 hours of runtime out of most PSP games. Moving on to PS2 using the PCSX2 emulator with Ratchet & Clank going commando. This one is running at 2x native resolution with widescreen enabled. Everything else is on defaults. I wish I had a save file from further into this game as this level is a bit gloomy and is challenging to film. Again, this one runs beautifully and isn't much of a load for the NUC, coming in at about 25 watts or an hour 50 runtime. 
Next up, here's some Wii with the Dolphin emulator and Sonic Colors. I'm running the D3D12 backend with a forced 16x9 aspect ratio and the widescreen hack enabled. This one is at native resolution as any more than that is a bit much for this NUC to run smoothly. I've never played this game before now but I've seen a few other people test it and it's precisely as fun as it looks. I'll have to give my kids a go this one because they're going to love it. The colours in this game look terrific on the IPS display and it runs flawlessly bar a little hiccup just at the beginning as the camera pans around Sonic. Power consumption is about 27 watts which gives us an hour 40 of playtime for Wii titles. Here's where power consumption starts to get a bit more exciting. If you've watched my previous videos you've already seen me play this one, but for the uninitiated this is Dirt 3 running at the native screen resolution with all graphics options set to low. It's silky smooth but the NUC is happily sucking down 40 watts of total system power leaving us with just an hour 10 of gameplay from our 45 watt hour battery. Next up, here's Portal 2. This is another one I've had a test play of in previous episodes, but I was interested to see how much load this one is putting on the NUC. This test is at native screen resolution with 2x anti-aliasing, V-Sync enabled and all settings cranked up to high. With these settings the NUC is sucking back about 42 watts leaving us with just an hour of gameplay. Obviously there's a fair bit of headroom on this one and it could be made much more efficient by dialing back the quality settings and resolution if you wanted to play this game on the go. And now, last but not least, here's Doom again. This is running at 1280x720 as I couldn't get it to run at the native 1024x600 of the internal display. With all graphics options set to low, this one sucks back a staggering 455 watts, ensuring that you'll stand no chance of seeing an hour out of your battery whilst running this game. It's still silky smooth even though it's running less than 60 FPS, but this one is obviously pushing the limits of this little nut. With games that draw this much power, it is probably best to only play them when running off the charger, as extended runs at this sort of power level will quickly degrade your batteries. Just before we finish up, I thought I'd give game streaming a quick go, and see how much runtime we can expect on that. My host computer is only connected via Wi-Fi and it is quite a distance from the router so the latency isn't great here but it will do for testing. My desktop display is a 21 by 9 aspect ratio so that's why the black bars are at the top and the bottom of the screen. I could fix it but I don't intend to use this as a streaming device often so I won't bother messing with it for now. As expected, power consumption is pretty low so you can expect around 2 hours and 40 minutes of game streaming. That's it for the testing for now. By the time you're seeing this I will have pulled everything apart again so I can finish testing the PCBs and finalise the designs so I can order what is hopefully the last batch of PCBs for the controller. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you check out the previous videos if you're interested in the build process and go give PCBWay some love. They are helping make this project possible. See you all next time.